My goal in this video is to really take you guys step by step. I want to be very informative for you guys. So in case you are interested in redoing your own cabinets, you guys will have a little bit more knowledge after watching this video. Our plan for the colors of these cabinets is to actually do a two-tone look. So I'm going to just jump right in. Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's Lauren here, and as you can see behind me, we're not in the shop anymore. We are on site to give these kitchen cabinets a total makeover. Well, we are gonna be using Beyond Paint to make over these cabinets and give them a new life. We are actually a couple hours away from home, and we are redoing the kitchen of my Nana's friend's house. She just moved in and she's already for an update of her cabinets. As you saw, there are those old oak cabinets that are just wood and outdated. So they do need a new life for sure. And it's going to look amazing once we get that new hardware on and those new colors. I am so excited to just see the final results. We're basically going to be setting up the garage area in here. And this is where we're going to be painting the actual doors and drawers because we'll definitely want to remove them and get them out here so that way we've got a little bit more space to paint. Our plan for the colors of these cabinets is to actually do a two-tone look. So on the tops, we are going to be doing the color linen from Beyond Paint. And then on the bottoms, we're gonna be doing licorice, which is a black color. We are ready to jump right in. So the first step that I am going to take is to make sure that I remember where all of the doors and drawers belong. Because if you know, if you've ever taken cabinets apart, it's really similar to furniture. You know, the doors and drawers go in the spots where they came out of, or else you're not gonna have good matches. This door might seem like it's the same size as this door, but truly it's not. So I'm gonna be labeling as I take down each drawer and door. And also I'm gonna be making sure to keep these hinges. We are gonna be replacing the hardware, so I'll set that aside. We'll probably donate that to the ReStore. So I'm gonna just Let's jump right in. As for labeling the actual doors, what I like to do is right inside where I took the hinges off, I'm going to just label it there because it's okay if I avoid painting that area since the hinge will be covering it up. So that number is going to match right here to right here and that way I'll still know where that door belongs. We got all our cleaning supplies as well as prep materials. So I am going to be using Simple Green to clean. It is an all-purpose cleaner and it's really going to get that grease and oil. And then I've also got my scrubby sponges because I think that'll really help me get just the areas that have a little bit more crud on them. Now that I cleaned the tops, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the tops. Above the oven and stove is gonna be your most dirty spot just because, you know, when you're cooking, all that grease just goes up. Definitely make sure that you clean extra well up here. That's some dirty water. Just to think that the water's dirty only from the actual outsides Frame, framework of the cabinets, and that's not even including the doors. So that's crazy amount of dirt. Ugh. But that is a prime reason why we need to clean before we're ready to paint. And so technically we're ready to paint, but like I said before, we do need to cover the area. So I've got a couple of different things. I've got some different sizes of the blue scotch tape with the plastic that comes attached to it. And then I've also got some frog tape to tape off some of the areas like the walls and things like that where I don't wanna get any paint. Keep 
I am going to lay down the plastic with the tape along the countertops just so I don't drip any paints on there. Now that we've got all the plastic laid out and everything taped off, we're finally ready for the fun part, painting. So as I said before, I am going to be using linen for the tops. So we're gonna get started with the linen and kind of work our way down to the lower cabinets. This is gonna need two coats. I am using a little paint tray roller. I forgot to, to bring my foil, but that's okay. We'll just clean it out later. And I've also got my roller and my chip brush because this paint is better if you roll it on and then you stipple in the areas that you can't reach with your roller. You don't need to stir this paint, it's just all ready. And remember, it looks funky when it comes out of the jar. It's gonna kinda glob out, but that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, so we're just gonna start with that much. I used about a third right there of the jar. This paint, a little bit goes a long way. I wrapped up the first coat of linen on the tops, just on the framing of the cabinets. And so I did go ahead and wrap that up, my kit and everything, because I will be using that again. Obviously I've got to use it on the drawers and then on the second coat. And now I'm going to grab a new kit for a new color. And we're gonna move down below and I'm gonna be doing licorice is the color name and it's actually the black color that beyond paint has so i'm gonna go ahead and open this and we're gonna pour it in the kit just like i did before and we're gonna get started i'm just gonna be doing the same exact process here down below there's a little bit more area here for me to use my roller, but this is also some extra space that I didn't have on the top. So um, it might take up a little bit more paint, but then there's also things like the stove and the dishwasher that are taking up more space on that side. So just keeping that in mind when you're using the paint and Basically what I've been doing is going over all of the flat areas with my roller and then coming back in stippling the areas where it is kind of raised or there's some more detail and remember that stippling motion is just quick up and down motions. Beyond Paint recommends that you don't actually use your brush in a brush motion but that you stipple and then once I'm done stippling, I'll kind of go over it with my roller one more time just to even it all up. That does it for the black. And yes, ugh, I need to get in all the nooks and crannies. Don't forget to pull out your fridge. You know, chances are there's always gonna be a fridge here, but if for some reason there's not, then you know, you don't just want a wood cabinet sticking out right there. So, you know, make sure that you paint everywhere that can be seen and that even can't be seen. We're ready for some linen on the backs of these cabinets. I've got this table full and that table full and two on the floor. So this is definitely the most cabinets and these are the ones on the top. So we're gonna start with the insides, then those will dry, then I'll flip them over and we can do the outsides. We have the first coat done on everything now. So the cabinets are going to dry, but I'm gonna head back inside and at least do a second coat in the kitchen, both on the tops and the bottoms. 
We're back inside in the kitchen and I have already lightly sanded down the surface of the linen. We're ready to do coat number two on that while the doors dry and then we'll head back to the garage to do the last coat of the black on the doors and then we'll come back in here to do the black and then we'll be able to assemble. We're finished up with the linen, so we don't have to paint any more with this color. I did want to show you guys, this is a quart size, so it's 32 ounces. I had just the top here of the cabinets and I didn't even use a full quart. So I've still got that much left. There's about that much left in there so still got some extra paint and I'm actually going to be leaving this so that just in case the owner wants to touch up anything or paint something else this color she'll have it on hand Finished up with that second coat on the insides of the doors and then I also went ahead and did the second coat on the drawer fronts just so that those will be ready uh, quicker and might as well while I have the blackout. So basically now we're kind of waiting in between. So we've got to let the insides of the cabinet doors dry and I think I'm going to let them dry for about 30 more minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to be opening all of the hardware, getting all of the hinges and all of that good stuff ready so that later on we don't have to waste our time doing that. We decided last minute, which I should have thought about this before. I don't know why I didn't because on my parents' um, kitchen remodel, I did end up replacing the hinges with the same exact style, but just a different color. And it just didn't cross my mind this time, but after figuring out that this is what the hinges look like, I just think that replacing them will help up the the makeover even more if that makes any sense and so i decided to head to lowe's and i talked with the owner here and so we ended up buying some new hinges so that we can replace the old brass ones that are very dirty and replace them with the brushed nickel which will also match the hardware pulls that we picked out as well so this is going to look way better all right i went ahead and took all of the tape and plastic out of the kitchen so now we are ready to assemble everything i am going to start here in the house and put the hinges on and then once all the hinges are on i'll move on to the hardware and then we'll attach the doors put the linen cabinets on. I would definitely recommend putting the hinges on the doors before um, attaching them on the framing, uh, just because it's gonna be much easier to hold like this and then screw in only two instead of attaching the other side of the hinge. The hardware, you could do either way, but since we were doing the hinges, I thought might as well just go ahead and do the hardware. We are finished up. Everything is hooked on and back in business. Then we will reveal the whole thing to you guys. We're here, day four. We've got to do some touch-ups. For touch-ups, what I'm going to be doing is just using some detail brushes to go around and make sure that everything is covered and there's no wood, along with also just making sure that all of the hinges are tight and that the hardware is on correctly, that all the doors open and shut really well, and then we'll be finished. Oh 
Well, there we have it, you guys. We're finished, and wow, what a project. Wow, what a transformation these cabinets endured over the past four days. I want to talk just a little bit about some things that I want to remind you of if you are planning on tackling a kitchen cabinet set because, you know, over the process of doing this a couple of times now, I've learned some things. And my first tip is do not rush yourself. You know, this time I gave myself kind of a, I think it's going to take about three days two full days, but then that first day we kind of just worked for a couple hours and then we ended up having to come back today, which is totally fine because I needed to make sure that it was right. But if you're doing this, just make sure that you're taking your time and since it is such a long and tedious process, so that means that you need to pay attention to the small details. When you hang up the doors, it might scratch the paint off just a little bit because it hasn't been that two to three day curing time yet. But go back before you're finished and touch up those little marks. That's what I was doing here today, especially that I'm doing it for a client. You know, I want it to be that quality finish. Let's talk about the finish of the paint a little bit. There's a lot of talk about it being super rough and that you can see the brush strokes and things like that. Well, first of all, you can't see the brush strokes because we don't use a brush with Beyond Paint. And second, you know, the finish of it isn't smooth per se to the touch, but I wouldn't consider it rough. It's very hard to explain unless you're here, but we will do some close-up shots. You can't see the roughness, and it's not that you're seeing texture, but that extra little feel really helps the paint stay durable and have that protective coat over it. So we really enjoyed using the Beyond Paint, and it recommends, like I said, that two to three days of cure time, and then another 30 days for curing until you can wipe them down with soap and water. So I am going to recommend for my client that she leaves these open for at least a couple of days and I'm gonna even tell her the longer the better and then just to be careful for that first month of these cabinets being painted just so that there's no hiccups. But I am going to be leaving her some paint. So let's talk about how much paint I used. I already talked about the linen and how there's about a fourth of the whole jar left, which is pretty awesome because this paint just a little bit goes a long way. I know the price tag can be scary, but just one of these jars can make over your entire area. For the black, I used about, I have about a third of the jar left. There was a little bit less of the black cabinets, so that's why I have a little bit more of that. And then the navy, I used less than half in that bathroom vanity. So you can definitely get that smaller size if you don't need a big area. There's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind on to why you might want to do this as opposed to getting new cabinets as a whole. One is the cost. It is very much more cost effective if you redo your own cabinets. And then your second reason is, you know, just to save the landfill. It's instead of taking all of this out and replacing it with new, we can give it a nice update similar to furniture with just a couple of coats of durable paint. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys plan on redoing your kitchen, maybe even your bathroom. I would recommend maybe starting smaller in the bathroom if you have a smaller vanity. Just paint that at first and see kind of how you like the process. I personally am in it for the transformations. I just love the way that it, it just paint can change the look of a kitchen. Like this is just a dramatic change and I'm really pleased with the outcome.
Well, here we are five months later, and I'm just so happy with how these cabinets are holding up with the Beyond Paint. Now, in five months, there's been a lot of traffic in this kitchen. Between Christmas dinners and people in and out of this kitchen, we wanted to see and test the durability of Beyond Paint. So as you can see, the paint is holding up amazing. There are no chipping around the doors here that have a lot of traffic all of the dishes are in here all of the things that are used on the daily are in here and these are opened up every single day now there were a couple of spots that did have a little bit of chipping and those spots were very high traffic areas and I'm not going to shy away from telling you guys that because I think that being transparent in this is very important so that you guys can make your decision for yourself in using Beyond Paint. I already touched it up, but right here, there was a little bit of wear and tear going on because this is where the silverware is kept. So there were a lot of fork jabs into the wood, which makes sense. But all you've got to do is have a little bit of that extra paint and touch it up here and there every once in a while. Something that can really help the durability of the Beyond Paint is to make sure when you're finished painting with it that you wait those two to three weeks for it to be able to dry and cure completely. This means that you know you might not be able to do the normal wear of every single day. Sliding the drawers in hard or slamming the doors, that's all going to wear on the paint. And especially in those first couple of weeks, you need to be extra careful. I'm super impressed with just the finish of the Beyond Paint. After five months, I'm coming back and I'm scratching at it and nothing is happening here. You know, there's no chipping coming off right there. And I'm really also pleased with the finish and meaning how smooth it is. Truly, the Beyond Paint is holding up so nicely and again it is so easy for anyone to do so if you guys are interested these are linked down below in the description as well as the paint kit that you guys can get that just makes the job even that much more easy and the most important part we can't forget what does our client think of her new cabinets and of course how they're holding up so what are your thoughts on it overall Oh, I had get so many compliments on it. Yeah, no, I've been really happy with it. So as you heard and saw, our client was just absolutely thrilled with how the cabinets turned out. She loves the colors. She continues to get compliments from people who come over to her house. So that just makes me even more happy to hear as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to get subscribed down below because we have a couple of more projects with Beyond Paint in the works, as well as tons of other paint products that we're going to be using. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the flip side.